Air, it's everywhere, and yet so useless. That is, until you compress it. Meet my 3D printed compressed air powered Winkle engine. It's an incredibly compact, complex, and powerful engine, and bringing this creation into fruition was not easy. Even the best FDM printers are inconsistent at best and have notoriously poor accuracy, so designing a precision engine to operate despite these poor tolerances required a lot of work. But I'll get into all that and all the different ways I tried to solve it in a bit. First, some background. The Winkle engine was designed by the definitely not narcissistic German engineer Felix Winkle almost a century ago. And to this day, it remains one of, if not the, most powerful internal combustion engines by engine weight. So, why did I want to 3D print one of these? Uh, <laughs> mostly just because they look cool. Unlike traditional piston engines, which have a piston sliding axially in a tube, Winkle engines work by using this eccentric rotating Dorito, let's call it. As this Dorito rotates around, you'll notice it creates constantly moving air pockets that are expanding and contracting, and this is what's used to drive the engine. Now in a combustion-powered rotary engine, fuel would be injected here as this volume is expanding. It's then compressed, a spark plug ignites it, the mixture explodes, and the expanding gases push the piston further, creating torque and allowing the engine to continue running. Now there's a lot of neat advantages to this design of the engine, but that's for another video. What I care about is how to make one using my FDM 3D printer. So without any further delay, here it is. And believe it or not, this was my first attempt. No, 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 no. Mm. Okay, fine. I may have made a few attempts before this one, but uh, that's how you learn. So before we look too closely at the final working version, let's take a look at all the different ways I learned how not to make a Winkle engine. First up, we have Jerry. Jerry is actually my second design, but Jerry is such a Jerry he made me lose my first. Now this design uses little notches printed onto the piston which are designed to open up ball valves at the little crutch of the motion here as this piston spins around. The idea is a little notch pushes the ball valve open, allows air in, expands, spins. Cool idea, didn't work, so I ditched it. Next up is this, a total redesign, and it's actually inspired by Tom Stanton's most recent air engine. It uses these little air flappers, which work very similar to the way his piston engine works. To get a better understanding of how my design works, let's take a look at the CAD. So this includes just about everything except for the top engine cover and the pneumatic fittings for the air intake. Looking from the front, we can take the cross section, which exposes all the interesting parts. So those valve flappers I mentioned previously, those are the two green pieces. Then we have the Dorito, aka piston, aka rotor, in purple, the eccentric shaft in cyan, the main housing in yellow, and each of the valve housings in red. Additionally, there's two yellow balls, and those are the BBs that will seal against those black features, which are all the O-rings. Now taking a closer look at one of the valves, it'll start off like this with the BB sitting in the O-ring, which will seal it, no air can come in. As the piston rotates around, it will push in the valve flapper. Now at this point, it will seal off that first o-ring so no air can enter the main cylinder. And then at this point, it will now open up that one-way valve and allow air to pressurize that large chamber in the red housing. But because that first o-ring is still sealed, it can't get out. Then the piston continues around. It will reseal the intake so no more air from the air supply can come in. And then shortly after, it will break the seal on the second o-ring and allow air to enter the cylinder, at which point the piston will be propelled by the expanding gases and the cycle can continue. Now this means that I need to have two o-rings which are both somewhere in here. Uh, guess how I got them in? <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Here we have this one. As you can see, it didn't last very long. But it was the first attempt at using a two-piece assembly. This allows me to get those little inner o-rings installed much more easily and then just requires some post-assembly. Good solution and I'll use it going forwards, but this engine's toast. Next we have this one, the first successful engine. And when I say successful, I mean it's spun. Oh, 
It looks like it's spinning nice and smoothly, but unfortunately this piston has terrible seals. So this engine spun for one reason only, and that's because the little valve flappers designed to control the air intake into the engine were pushing against the piston. And the fact that it sealed so poorly meant it was very low friction and thus was able to spin around. So basically, this engine would run just as well without a top plate on. Not efficient, not cool. Moving on, I should mention that that previous engine also only worked because the valve stayed open for random amounts of time, and that's because the little balls in the valves are free to float just about anywhere they'd like. The result is valves that stay open way longer than they're supposed to and way more than the amount of air that is supposed to be contained in these pockets actually going into the cylinder. So for this version, I added some pegs inside which I could then attach some 3D printed springs to. Now these springs worked great. Unfortunately, this also exposed a pretty big flaw in my engine. The piston seals still suck. Here, we have yet another total redesign of the engine. But good news, this time I actually designed it properly, I master modeled it, it came together way nicer, all the parts are in sync, it's so much easier to edit, and it still doesn't work. Womp womp. Here we have basically the exact same engine as the previous one, but I actually took my time and used silicone, uh, but then I didn't wait for it to dry before I ran it, so it leaked. Ah, and then I hit enlightenment. What am I doing? I need to fix the pistons. So I finally spent some time and played around with all these different piston designs to figure out just why my engine had such terrible sealing. Now, at first, I tried something like this, which uses thicker O-rings at the apexes so that they should theoretically have more squish and allow them to seal better without applying as much pressure. But unfortunately, I found that these caught in all the little nooks and crannies from the intakes and exhausts on the uh, inside of the engine. Bummer. So then I figured, hmm, why not go bigger? And it was worse. So then I said, hmm, why not go smaller? And this actually worked surprisingly well. After a little more tuning of the engine dimensions, considering these apex seals are only one millimeter, it required much more accuracy printing the piston and the housing. But surprisingly, this design worked pretty well and actually managed to create some pretty bad, but non-zero seals. That makes sense. You'll also notice something else unique about this piston. It has these little cuts in it. This was a pretty cool idea I had, which should allow the air to be injected into the engine quicker. The left side shows with this new cut and the right side without. Notice how much earlier in the piston cycle the air gets injected into the cylinder. So then we get to this engine. It has an even bigger piston head reservoir. It's using the new piston with better seals. It was assembled properly. I was patient and it didn't run. What was my problem this time? Actually, it didn't really have a problem. It just didn't have enough power to turn over and sustain itself. I bet if I added the second intake onto the other side of this engine, it probably would have run, just not very efficiently. Oh, but the reason I didn't do that was because I accidentally printed this part in a rolled back state, uh, so it didn't print the exhaust vents and I had to drill them out by hand, and I didn't really put them in the right spot. My bad. And next up we have this engine. I fixed it by printing it with exhaust vents. Exciting. And I also added both sides because I figured why not go all out. And unfortunately it just didn't want to run. This was the last version before I made some tweaks to the internal dimensions of this cylinder wall, and it was just a little too tight in some spots, too loose in others, didn't seal well enough, but was too high friction, and wasn't able to turn over. And finally we ended up here. This is the final version, and it has one critical feature which none of the others have. It works. Well, at least eventually it did made a few big changes with this version of the engine which needed some fine tuning to get working right. So the biggest change with this version is that it has a piston that actually makes a good seal. Surprising it took me this long, right? Well, no. Sealing of the piston is basically the never-ending problem with these engines and it's why in real life these engines drink oil like nobody's business. So how did I solve it? Well, just a lot of iteration really. And the result is an engine that is actually driven by the expanding air, rather than those earlier protos which were just driven by that valve flapper pushing against the piston. Speaking of the valve flappers, man, what a pain they were. 
You see this one? This is what used to be in the engine when I first built it up. And then I swapped in this one. And to my surprise... It suddenly worked. And do you want to know what the difference was? A hundred microns. Yep. I also did something with this version of the engine that I never do. I printed the piston on a raft. And why? Uh, once again, chasing the micron. Printing directly on a build surface will imprint any non-coplanarity into that first layer, because that first layer of hot plastic is going to just be eating it up, whether it's 20 microns or 200. But by printing on a raft, that raft will eat up any of that coplanarity air, and the part itself will be printed on top, which means the two faces should be nice and coplanar. Now, I could have just leveled my printer bed better, but yeah. Okay, great. So now you know what I've been doing for the past two months. But let's get into the real meat and potatoes, the reason you click this video. And small aside, yes, I'm aware the engine cover is not made on an FDM printer. The engine does work just fine with an FDM printed cover, but then you won't get to see stuff like this. Hey look, I put a propeller on it. And speaking of propellers, I also 3D printed one of Tom Stanton's earlier prototypes just as a comparison. Now as a quick disclaimer, I did contact Tom for a collab earlier on in this project. He still hasn't gotten back to me, so I can only assume that he was so flattered by my offer he was just too nervous to reply. But that's alright. Let's take a look at the competition. Dang, yeah, that's, um, that's impressive. So that was with about one liter of air at 40 psi. And for comparison, here's my rotary with the same air supply. That's it. <laughs> yep. Now, as you could probably tell, my engine does have a lot more power, but it just kind of releases it all at once. Yeah, mine's definitely a lot less efficient. And that's okay. I didn't think it was going to be efficient. I just wanted to make one that works. And it does. So that about wraps up this project. Thank you so much for watching. Huge thanks to all my patrons. Your support is really helping so much to make these videos possible. If you enjoyed, please like the video, subscribe, comment below if you have suggestions on projects you'd like to see, and until next time.